In this video, we're going to look at the video production Amiga setup from a local TV station in the 1990s. We're going to start out today by taking a look at four boxes of various hardware, software, books, magazines, all kinds of goodies. So a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to an old friend of mine, Gary, and he mentioned that he had some Amiga stash in his shed and wanted to know if I wanted to take a look at them. Uh, I guess the answer is kind of obvious here. But when he arrived, what he had was so special, uh, just pff, my mind was blown. Uh, what this is, is the television production department from a local TV station, uh, including five Amigas, two of them with toasters, with all kinds of boards and software and everything. So I'm going to take a look at these, and it's got so long I had to split it into two videos. So in this video, we're going to take a look through these boxes. This box is full of software and hardware and cards, and I don't know what. Uh, there are four total boxes. I couldn't fit them all on the bench. So first, we're going to take a look at the original photos I was sent to see what he had. And I got to warn you, these photos may be disturbing to some viewers, so viewer discretion is advised. These were a local TV station's production equipment. So the 4000 and the 3000T have toasters in them. There's gen locks. I've got a bunch of stuff here that we just need to go through and see what it is because I don't know what I have. Um, below me here are four boxes, one of them quite large. In fact, I think it's an Amiga. I think it's an Amiga 2000 box. So my goal for today is to dig through the boxes and just see what's in here. I'll try to go through that quickly, but there's a lot of stuff. And I'm hoping you guys are going to be able to tell me what some of this stuff is or, you know, what to do with it. So let's get to it. All right. So I'm going to go through the first box right now. We're just going to take a look at the smallest one, one thing at a time. So Pro Wipes 3.0 Volume 1. So videotape. Oh. Not videotape. So it looks like it's transitions. Next, there's a box within the box. And this is indeed a quantum LPS. Has the termination resistors taped up there, so they clearly weren't using them. Caviar 21600. Uh, this has got to be a PC drive. That says it's a 1.6 gigabyte. Professional page, slightly mouse-eaten. It's a little bit wrinkled. Um, it's been wet for sure, but it doesn't look like it's wet with urine. <laughs> oh, there's that. Oh, looks okay. That's a little rough in there. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to want this. Workbench 3.0. Absolutely crusty. Frame Grabber, real-time video image digitizer, progressive software. Ooh. Well, there's a manual. Let's, uh, let's hope the so uh, software, let's hope the hardware is in there. Amiga DOS, Amiga Workbench 2.1 has been very wet, coming apart. If this stuff is all dry. Nothing is currently wet or even damp. So I don't even know that this is... Yeah, this is all stuck together. So that's probably ruined as well. 
Okay, this has got a dirty cover. Looks okay on the inside. Morph Plus by ASDG. Isn't it ASDF? So that corner's gotten wet. I'll have to sanitize and clean that up. Believe me, my hands will be cleaned here shortly. So the manual, though, looks great. I remember <laughs> morphing was so hot back in the day, all these morph animations and stuff coming out. Opus, the essential directory utility. So I've got a lot of manuals here. Let's hope I've got software too. There's a lot of disks, but I don't know what's on them. The few I peeked at, there were some toaster disks and it looked like a bunch of backups. But this Opus looks great. Art Department Professional. Nice, almost denim kind of binder. It's like a, kind of like an old recipe book. Arax loaders, savers, and operators. Oh, hey, look at that. Discs and grubby. This is going to take a lot of cleaning. I hope these discs are all right. Program disc one, program disc two, patch disc two. Seems like it's all here because that's all that would fit in these sleeves. Tutorial disc, program disc three, and patch disc one. So, pretty much it for this box. Starting with the item on top. Says Deluxe Paint 4. There's something in there, but not much. But this box is like nasty bits. Here is something that I knew was in there because I read it in bed last night. This is the Video Toaster version 1 manual. This is not the one I read in bed last night. There's another one around here because I read one and it wasn't eaten like this. The one I had that I was looking at, we'll, we'll come across it later, so I'll show it to you when I get it. It's an ad for all-in-one broadcast switcher. Costs $15.95, the Video Toaster. Toaster 2, there's two manuals. Lightwave 3D, I was wondering about that. There was no Lightwave manual. Beautiful. Here is one I haven't looked at yet. I think this will be my reading material tonight. So this is the Video Toaster 4000 manual. So Video Toaster 3.1, that last one was 2.0 or 1.0. Toaster 4000 addendum, tutorials, switcher, chroma, toaster paint, Toaster CG, and appendices. Deja vu. Don't know what this is. It's a yellow binder. Yeah, it's a yellow binder. Video Toaster System 2 software and manual. It's kind of a halfway between the 4000 and the other manual I was looking at. Another toaster manual. Cool. Everybody likes toast. Okay, boy, this is hopefully going to clean up because that's ugly, but it says broadcast titler. Oh, yuck. So this one was getting leaked on, and I'm not sure what kind of leak. It seems like the pages are still loose, so I'm going to guess it was just water. Well, no disc, so who knows if we actually have this. And here's a deluxe paint box that's not great, but it certainly looks better than the last one. It opens. So I saw a video not that long ago, and it was... RMC, the cave, about how to clean up boxes like this. It looked pretty good. So there is Deluxe Paint 3. The manual minus the cover, it looks like. But the manual itself looks pretty good. Keyboard shortcuts, registration card, electronic arts ads, and a fonts ad. No discs. Wah, wah. Yeah, maybe they're in these piles I have. We'll find out. And then to go with it, right next to it was, oh, yuck, Video Deluxe 3, TV text, and a book, and they're all literally glued together. I'm just going to put these aside in the, I don't know what I'm going to do with them pile. So Interworks Professional Network System, the NLAN DFS, the Internet-Based Distributed File System for the Commodore Amiga series of personal computers. Reference manual, registration card, uh, instructions on how to use specific Ethernet cards. 
Uh, it's been a long time, but I think that's A-Rex. Ethernet, cheap, cheaper net board for the Commodore Amiga. Land Rover thin Ethernet. Cheap. These, are, oh yeah, two of the same thing. Oh, but there's discs. Nice floppy container. So we have Inland DFS version one by Innerworks and the EB920 Santa 2 drivers. Without the cards, don't know how useful this will be, but uh, there it is. Corel Commercial Printing Guide. That book is like a brick. Amiga 2090 Hard Disk SCSI Controller User Guide. It's certainly far from perfect, but it's usable, and I may need the information, so we'll wipe that off and clean it up later. Amiga 1084S High Resolution Monitor. Hey, a manual for the monitor. And the monitor is down here. I don't know that I've shown it, but... Uh, it clearly was used for video toaster for a very long time. It's about as burnt in as I've ever seen a, a computer monitor. Professional page by Gold Disk, the 1.3 supplement. That looks fine. Mega 3000T. Not perfect, but certainly not ruined. So that can go with the th with the three because that's going to somebody. Final copy three. It has something glued to the back of it, and this is a word processor manual. So this would have to be restored, cleaned, sanitized, and flattened. Cara fonts, headlines. It's another brick book. IBM IntelliStation User's Guide. Brick. There's an Amiga 2000 manual. Maybe it can be cleaned up and flattened, but I suspect that's being optimistic. I can't even begin to express what my hands feel like right now. Okay, a 1940-42 monitor manual that is fine for once. Something fine. Professional page four supplement manual. And again, this is just fine. So it was not getting the same wet that everything here was. Commodore 1084S high-res monitor, same one I just pulled out, but that one is shot. Oh, hey, Commodore authorized warranty repair locations. I know who to send that to. That can go with the Amiga 3000T. ProWrite word processor for Amiga. It's a supplement. And some sketch drivers and utilities. So some of these things I'm just hanging on to in case I have discs. And lastly, out of this box of loveliness, a whole bunch of nasty looking discs. Unexpected strikes. Can't tell what that says. Celebration, help, teleprompter, counting on you, obstacles, reaching out. Northwest weather for morning news. That's it for that box. So as I went through this box, I found that there was a lot of stuff that is just not of a great deal of interest. So I'm going to skip through a lot of that. So rest assured, all I'm skipping is junk like hard drive backup disks. Those may come into play when I do the restorations. But for right now, it's just a bunch of disks labeled D80, disk 1, disk 2, disk 57. Okay. Well, that's colorful. Ah, new tech. So, Video Toaster 3.1. Disc 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then GVP Utilities. This is a DOS digital processing system. Personal TBC2. Amlink Video Editing Productions Spring Update AB Roll VT2 Video Toaster 4000 B Roll. Man. No. Oh my god. Video Toaster 4000. Disc 1, 2, 3, 4, 12, 22, 40, 45 discs. So, but that looks like all, assuming there's 45, um, I think somebody told me there were 60, but that may be a different version. But it looks like uh, 45 toaster discs, 
plus the six 3.1 install discs. And that box has not got Grody's in it. Yay. Something Company Slates. Frame Store, Judy Kemp Full. So these are a bunch of Frame Store discs. Look like they're all related to, I'm guessing, advertisements for a uh, company of some kind. If they're still in business, maybe they want them. Well, the discs are turning out to be a bit of a flop. Blank, oh, blank discs, new. 5394, those are fresh. So that's handy. Work, A Backup, disc sets. Four twenty-eight ninety-five. So Amiga three thousand update disc two point oh two. Include thirty-seven point one linker libraries. Commodore Amiga, nice. Autodoc thirty-seven. Stevie sports drawings. Stevie Unix utility post surf. These four discs are a different color, and these all look like blanks. What I'm not seeing here, though. Besides the toaster, is software to go with a lot of these manuals, which is kind of sad. There's another box to go through, though. Oh, this looks different. Totally unmarked. C code. Oh, for Gary. Code plus upgrade for Gary. C code for Gary. Source for Gary. Sample plots. AREX stuff. I think these actually may be Gary's discs. I might need to get them back to him. Drawing for bikes. So Gary owned a recumbent bike company that designed and built bikes. He designed and built bikes. That's why he wrote plans, I believe. Cool. Uh, so we got two boxes of discs, and that might all be magazines, although if it is, it's a lot of magazines. Fish disc number 107. Transactor for the Amiga Volume 2, Issue Disc 1. Transactor Volume 1, Issue 1. So I'll have to see if those are out there, but and have to see if that's actually what's on the discs. There's hours of entertainment in these boxes. Unless there's stuff under the magazines, this is the last box of discs. Mobius, that's where Gary worked. Four pans, see work. Mobius drawings. Just funny, a buddy and I, Tom, we made Magic the Gathering tokens in the mid-90s, and Mobius is who printed them. Kind of fun to have something that we did on Magic Rarities. And I see, a, see single tokens that would have sold at retail for a quarter on eBay for $12.50 regularly. All right, it looks like the rest of this box is all magazines. And uh, no matter what I did, I couldn't edit this to be interesting. So I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis. And if you want to see all the, all the stuff on the magazines as far as going through and listing the, the dates and titles and stuff, um, I will post a link below to the unedited uh, raw version of just looking through them all. So what I found is there are 25 issues of Amazing Computing slash Amazing Amiga. They changed names along the way. They range from volume three, number four, from sometime in 1988, all the way through volume 11, number 10, in October of 96. Uh, I found 16 issues of Amiga World, which was one of my favorite magazines back in the day. They vary from June of 88 through February of 95. And the January 95 issue is there, which is their 100 issue special. There's five issues of AC's Tech Amiga, and these are really cool because the discs are still included. Uh, three of the five issues have the discs still in the sleeve inside. Um, and then there were two issues of Amiga Transactor, and these are the ones that really lit me up because that was my technical magazine for Amiga back in the days. Uh, both of the covers are familiar, and the blue cover is something that was around for a very, very long time. I think the main reason I had the January 89 issue around for so long is there's an article on calling the command line interface from within Amiga Basic. There were four issues of Byte, three issues of a Macworld, which isn't really appropriate here, or not appropriate, but relevant, and then just a bunch of random bits and bobs. Um, you know, C programming journal, digital video stuff, C++ programming, 
I was personally kind of fascinated with an issue of Scientific American from 1996 with an article on electric cars, which is another one of my passions. So that's it for this box and on to the next one. So I saved the best for last. Obviously this one was more protected than the others. So, and I have seen the stuff in the top because this is the one I was reading, but this is what we're going to pull out next. Video toaster manual one. I did not notice. I thought I had two of them, but this is just the one I read the other day. Um, so, you know, remember those old ads where people were reading technical manuals in bed? That was me. So I had to read this. Uh, interestingly, it's got their um, Beta Buddy sticker, which is a floppy sticker with a bunch of contact information. And there was a page in here. Uh, here we go. I don't know if this was common and always around or if these guys were like early beta testers, but there's a preliminary toaster gamma version 0.9 documentation. And so since I've never messed with the toaster, I don't know if they all came this way. I noticed that uh, if you go through the manual, there are some places. So like here, figure 4.02. So definitely uh, missing the caption on that one. All right. So there's the other half of our toaster documentation. How cool is that? Can't wait to have those on my bookshelf. Okay, next. And this one's looking ugly. Where's a dusting cloth? Video effects 3D. A 3D tiling effects package for the Amiga. License, user guide, demo disc. But again, unless they're in this box, I don't think I have the discs for this. So maybe on a hard drive image or a backup image, I don't know. Back of the binder, video effects 3D. Next, we got some books. That's not a book, that is Elon Performer. Presentation system that puts your Amiga imagery right at your fingertips. And there is a whole pad of disk environments that has a keyboard, a virtual keyboard. That's kind of cool. There's a whole pad of those. A license agreement folder, and that is it. That's all that's in there. No disks. Ah, it's turning into the story of this whole deal. There's no disks, but, you know can't complain uh, software upgrade Amiga users guide ah introducing the video toaster 4000 by new tech videotape cool these are just your standard Amiga books the same as the ones that we uh, pulled out of that other box the other day that was just glued in and couldn't couldn't be removed Amiga DOS, Kara fonts instructions, Anim fonts instructions, Pick Magic Professional Quality Clip Art Package One. Just the clip art image catalog, all the art. Okay, let's get into something a little more interesting. Aha! Oh. This came from computer users. I believe the guy that owned that was Dave. It was a little computer store here in town that I loved to go to because he did a lot of Amiga stuff. Ah, that was. So this says floppy drive 1.76 mega Amiga high density. Um, so this definitely does not look new. I mean, you can see that's been used. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is a bad drive that was replaced by the one that came in the box, but we'll see. 
It is a Janon FB-357A. Now these are really interesting. So obviously television switching stuff. There's another one here with a, looks like a, I'm gonna guess a service tag on it. No longer service or make these boxes. Still have some in stock, $150 for new. Only has the Centronics on the back. And then this one, it's still 4010, but it also has the DB9. We will have to do some research, learn how to use all this stuff, because, well, that's the fun part, right? What is this? Deja Vu control system for the NewTek Video Toaster. Deja Vu learns complex video toaster, toaster effects for later recall, valuable for all types of toaster installations, standalone, blah, blah, blah. You guys can read it. Pause to read if you want to see what that says. See what's in here. Oh, it's hardware. Deja Vu Operator's Manual from ViewTech. Oh, well, that's heavy. Learn, menu, transition. Okay, this seems like it could be really cool, but I just don't know what I have. Oh, there's discs under this piece of paper, too. Deja Vu version 1.1 and Deja Vu version 2. Preview. Deja Vu. There is Deja Vu Manual. Insert in Video Toaster Manual, so it's probably in one of those. Deja Vu. Next, just floating around in the box, is a loose card, and it is a Magni video interface. Yeah, I'm sure this, this is what that uh, controller connects into. All right, this I'm going to set aside so it can go into an anti-static bag. And here is a Magni encoder board. And that is a dense board. It's definitely a bit twisted. It's going to go up here to go into a static bag as well. And there is a spare SCSI cable. That will come in useful. And this has got to be the mouse. I wonder what computer that goes to. Okay, this is not promising. These are glued together quite strongly. So this is a just modeler, create objects for Videoscape 3D, 3D object modeling. There's the manual MH. I know who that is, but I can't tell you. Mm, and story of my life, no discs. A lot of this software is probably on these old hard drives, assuming they still work. So we will see what we can do. Next up, we have can do power steering for the Amiga, because you can do just about anything. There's 1.5. This feels empty. But it is not. Can do Invitronics. Can do extras, can do program, and can do examples and utilities. So just the discs and some ads in there. So there's another tank mouse and just a bunch of miscellaneous cables. Okay, another blank binder. Got a toaster manual from the back. Yeah, Lightwave 3D, woohoo! So we got Lightwave 3D manual. This has a thing over it. It's AmiLink. Multimedia Video Production Editor, Editor's Guide, Direct Control of Nutex Video Toaster. One editor controller software for Amiga Computer, Amalink VT, with Edit List Manager and Video Toast Interface also included all cables and boxes to interface with Sony VO 5800, 5850, and 9850. $7,092. VO 9850 and manual, $5,500. It's kind of neat to see what these things cost back in the day. It's kind of scary, too. Okay. And this here is AmiLink Editor Professional. What do we have in here? AmiLink VT4000 B-Roll. Let me see, we don't have time now to go through every page of all these things. 
So other than a B-roll disc, though, I don't see any Amilink discs. So this just looks like a binder, just a lot of random bits and bobs, kind of thing you'd find at a business. Amilink Editor's Guide, okay. All right, I think this is the last binder. Video Toaster System 3.1. Hey, I don't know what that is. <laughs> There's something I'm familiar with, quarterback. Quarterback Tools version 1.4. Thank you for purchasing. Quarterback Manual. Ah, oh, there, a disc, finally a disc. Quarterback Tools number 4014. Okay, soon to be on eBay. This is one genuine Amiga documentation mouse nest. The, the entire mouse's nest is entirely made out of Amiga documentation and boxes. Uh, starting price on eBay should be about, oh, I'm thinking 500 bucks, 1,000, something like that. Next thing, Butech shipping container. This looks like something for videotape, but... An ST4A sync trap sync input adapter. Auxiliary sync adapter for the Video Toaster 4000. Now, I've been complaining, so I should, now that I see these mentioned, I found discs. See what we got. Hopefully, something we were looking for. All right, so this is all artwork. Probably proprietary artwork, so don't know that we'll ever uh, do anything with that. And then this one here. So draw program disc Amiga Graphics Starter Kit. So there's an original disc. This is a very eclectic and random connections. 1992 Elections Primary. So there's a. Full Amiga height drive, which is quite corroded. So we'll have to see what can be done with it. And then a normal PC. It's a TIAC uh, FD235HG. PixMate Total Image Processing System. But, hey, there it is. DOS to DOS. Read and write files on MS-DOS and Atari ST disks using standard... Amiga disk drives. Sounds familiar. I think I might have had that back in the day. Hey, but look at that disk. Amiga 1.3 Enhancer Software. Kick, kickstart Workbench and Extras. Two more things in here. Both of them are in boxes. That was the first one. Super Gen. Super Gen packing list. Aha. Oh. I've seen this recently on a video. I remember this funky cable. So it's got a bent pin, but that's fixable, I'm sure. Cool. So we'll have to make use of this. That is a weird cable. Heavy box. Release 2.4 enhancer ROM upgrade kit for the Commodore Amiga AS215. And here, well, there are some discs in here. Workbench 2.04, which I have. Ah, the extra is an install disc. I actually already have. I did most of the upgrades on my friend's machines, but all we got was this little folder of discs and a plastic case with the chips in it. These are all 2.0.2.05. And that's from Rick's Amiga 500, or I guess my Amiga 500 now, but... And I hope in the back, not that it matters, I've got them, but, yep, here is the fonts. So that was a lot of stuff, and if you guys have any suggestions as what to do with some of it, please say so in the comments below. So in the meantime, in the next few days, we'll have the video of the machines. If there's anything that I mentioned I thought was just trash that you think is of use, let me know, but uh, these things are just nasty. 
Uh, I'm going to see what I can recover, but I don't have a lot of hopes for some of the stuff. Other stuff, though, look beautiful, and there is a lot of really cool treasures that I will have around for a very long time. Deja vu. 